Hi y'all, it's Jeannie from Bushnell Unscripted, and I thought I would do a little kit up for this beautiful Diamond Art Joys of Spring by Abraham Hunter that I recently unboxed. Uh, I want to get started on this so that <laughs> I have the coming months to work on it before I send it to um, my pen pal in Sweden. So I really need to get going with this. And we'll do the art dot, art dot boxes that I worked on in my previous kit up. And I have to say, I really like these. There is a little bit of a knack to getting the drills in here and because you can easily overflow them with a really full bag so you do get in a flow and you it, it gets easier this is probably not the best funnel I have a metal one um, I should try that one instead because <laughs> this tends to get some static electricity let me get my metal one okay so this is one of my little old vintage cooking ones so let's see these don't really stand too well on their own so how's everybody doing as we are winding summer down <laughs> and I, I cut up a couple of trains and opened up some lids but as I was saying, I'm enjoying these in use. I'm currently using them on um, Burnt Rose, and I, I am enjoying using them. So I'm hoping the second time around for Kidding Up will go smoothly. Um, but, okay, so summer's coming to an end, and I'm, I'm ready. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but yeah, Metal Funnel works better. I am so ready for the hot weather to go away. <laughs> I've had enough. Like today, I would love to be outside doing this, but it is over 90 degrees and absolutely miserable. It's just, there's no enjoyment. I tried to sit outside yesterday a little bit to do a, a little bit of diamond dot. A, a diamond painting and um, just couldn't do it. I did a little bit to shoot a little bit of a, a short video to show my progress, but I just could not enjoy it. And that also, I'm having a little bit of a health issue right now. Um, two years ago, in 2022, I had a a flare a health flare I had an autoimmune flare my both of my feet turned purple and bright red and they were extremely swollen to the point that the skin was going to crack and no matter what I put on them to keep them moisturized it just did not improve the texture of my skin started changing the um, they eventually peeled I went and saw specialist after specialist I saw multiple cardiologists I saw vein doctors nobody could tell me what was wrong and it was to the point that I mean just walking from the car to the hospital was incredibly painful and they ran a bunch of blood work because one of the theories was <laughs> that I had um, a blood infection of some sort not that I'd been exposed to anything I hadn't traveled but that was a theory so they did a bunch of blood work and it came back that all of these markers for different types of autoimmune diseases 
came back extremely high. Okay, so they do stick a little bit to this as well. It's not without its own issues. Where's my little paintbrush? Uh, so it did have uh, some alarming results, but I could not get in to see a rheumatologist for three months. In that time, I also have a I have an implant in my mouth and that around that implant I got a bump on my gum that felt like an abscess but it wasn't I had to go in for multiple x-rays for that um, I have a great oral surgeon who did the implant and he was like there's nothing wrong with the implant you know you, I took everything the implant was at this point a few years old and it shouldn't have been giving me any problems like I don't think it's the implant I really think there is absolutely something going on with you and I think that's 608 well let's yeah right because those are upside down right <laughs> I should have paid more attention when I got them but that is how they do it when they cut the Goes like that. Okay. Um, anywho. So I was also having that problem. And this went on for a month and nearly a half. I was doing research on my own because I could not get a doctor to help me at all. And I, I already got one ready. I finally found an article that said if it's an autoimmune disorder prednisone will clear up the swelling will take down the changes to the skin and so I went to went back to the nurse practitioner who had run all the tests and I said you know can we at least try this prednisone and she's like sure whatever you know I'll try whatever and within 24 hours there had been a huge difference in my feet and within a couple of days the swelling was gone the discoloration everything so it just took care of itself um, 10 days on pred oh gosh 10 days on prednisone took care of it and I never had that issue again When I did see the rheumatologist, of course, I was not in the middle of a flare. He had all my blood work and ran more blood work. I still had positive uh, tests for autoimmune disorders, but they could not rule anything out. They could not say, he, as he said, he could not put me in a box. And until they could put me in a box, I would not get a diagnosis. And he said, if anything else happens, you know, come back and see me. Well, I didn't really think that anything happened. You know, I was always on the lookout for something with my feet. You know, that didn't happen again. And I didn't think about last summer. I had um, my right eye got a sty. And I thought that's all it was. And I'd had styes since I was little. And, but this was horrible. And ended up going, I, I tried to deal with it myself. And I, I did for a long time. And <clears throat> when I finally went to the doctor, he gave me some steroid cream and was like, you know, I don't know if this is going to help. It's really scarred. So we'll see. But I, I did apply the medicine and kept doing the heat compresses and cleaning and um, eventually it went down and went away. <laughs> Come to find out that was a flare as well and I didn't know it. It's not like anybody gives you a rule book of what a flare is. You have no idea. And The only reason that I know it now is because of what I'm going through, have been going through now for um, what two weeks. 
my face started looking flushed like I'd been working out or I had been working out in the yard in the sun. It was very red. My cheeks were very red and my face was on fire. Like I had fire ants crawling all over my face. And nothing, I initially thought, oh my gosh, I've, I've come in contact with something. I thought it was some kind of skin dermatitis. You know, I was cleaning my face. I was being extra cautious about taking care of my face, moisturizing, and nothing was working. And I have very sensitive skin anyway, so I don't, I don't use a lot of stuff and I don't use stuff with fragrances. It's pretty all natural. So for me to have something like that would be unusual. Um, kept going, you know, so I was a, a weekend and I, I really, then I realized I just need to call the rheumatologist because I'm, since I'm now on his docket, I can get in. <laughs> so, um, they said, oh yeah, we can see you to Thursday, this Thursday in a, okay, in a week. And I was like, okay. So got that appointment and, you know, I would say over the past few days, a lot of the redness has subsided to a degree, but not it's not gone. It's not as bad as it was. Um, I have video and pictures and everything. But my skin texture has changed. It's just like my feet were. Um, I've had a ton of swelling. My lips have been, now they're drying. Um, I've been putting coconut oil, and they say to put coconut oil all natural, no fragrance, um, because it has antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal properties to it to help if there's something on your skin. And, you know, while that feels good putting on, it has not done a thing for the absolute dryness that I feel. It is like I, my face is just the Sahara Desert. It, it doesn't really... You know, normally when you put on a lotion, your skin absorbs it and it feels oh, refreshed. It does not feel that way. It just feels like I've put something topically and it's not benefiting me on the inside. Um, I've had, I have dry eyes, but my eyes have gone from having dry eyes to the desert. I mean, it's been miserable and as well as my throat. Um, so I got a few things going on with this one and I'm really glad I called. I'm so reluctant to ever go in because I think I can take care of it and I, I get tired of being gaslit by doctors that, oh, you know, this is because you're a woman. This is because you're approaching 50. Whatever age you are, it's because you're approaching something else that, you know, that's what's wrong with you. And I, I've been on medical appointments with men and they never are told these things you know everything is an emergency and everything is we'll fix that up for you where women are yeah well um where are you in your cycle oh maybe it's perimenopause oh maybe it's because you never had children oh i'm it's your thyroid i've had it i've heard everything under the sun and uh, one thing i want to highlight is i have lipedema and that's a whole video within itself. And it's not lymphedema, it is lipedema. And I'll put some links below. And in 2022, that August, when I had this flare, I had actually, the very first symptom that I had was it looked like a bruise. And I was just fin finishing manual lymph drainage. And I had been in that for months because I had surgery for my lipedema. So I had had liposuction on my legs to reduce my lipedema and help with that so that I could maintain my mobility. So I had some trauma and my body was reacting to that, I believe. But it doesn't matter. I still had all of these issues. <laughs> Um, but it, I do want to let you know that I do have lipedema and um, was in the middle. I had just finished 
the MLD was feeling great. I mean, everything was good. My swelling had gone down. Most of my um, incision sites were healing and it was great. I was feeling good for the first time in, um, in months. So it was really shocking. But I never, I never got any answers. I never got any assistance. So I'm grateful that I have the ability to go see the rheumatologist, but I don't know what this is gonna mean. You know, they say that it takes on average between three and seven years to ever get diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. And I really understand it because they wanna see you in the middle of these flares. But if you can't get in, you can't get in. I don't, you know, it's just this runaround. So I imagine they're gonna run some blood work and to see where I'm at. <clears throat> and I, I mean, I don't know. I can only assume that's what this problem is. It sure feels like it, it sure looks like it. Um, so we'll see. So I've, I've not been feeling great. Today, the burn is a major factor on my face. It is just, Again, it just feels like you have, you know, fire ants on your face. It does not feel great. So, I've been experiencing that as well as, of course, I've mentioned before, my 10-year-old Siberian Husky. She has cancer, spindle cell, um, soft cell sarcoma, and she has had now five... areas on her skin, four of them on her side and one at her leg have opened up. It's not where her major tumor is. She has a very, very, very large inoperable tumor and um, that has not, <laughs> knock on every piece of wood, uh, ruptured, but her skin is rupturing. You know, it's just like when humans have cancer, the skin doesn't, it's no longer healthy and cell growth for, for healthy skin is, you know, healthy cells require healthy skin growth and she doesn't have it. So it's just a constant keeping that area clean, making sure she's staying away from it. You can't put any bandages on it, they will not work. So it's keeping it clean, keeping antibacterial medicine on it she's eating she has slowed down her eating she's not as hungry as she was she's still active but unfortunately she she would go out and run every day she gets a run every morning but she hasn't been able to do it lately because where the sore opened up on her leg is where her harnesses rub so um, she had one harness that didn't work anymore. So I had to buy her a new one because her old one went over the ones on the back. So I got a new one that just went um, closer to her, her neck, but it was great. It still worked. Well, once the thing on the leg opened, it doesn't work anymore because it hits too close to that. And I don't want that irritated and rubbed. So, um... It's kind of heartbreaking. You know, it's always so sad. I've, I've been here before. I've had a, um, my other three dogs one by one for three years in a row. Um, they started failing and it is, it's torture. So I've just had a lot on my mind and my heart and you know I am a caregiver for somebody who is who has um, bipolar one bipolar one disorder and has um, narcissistic personality disorder personality disorder as well as has a traumatic brain injury and that's not always a walk in the park. 
Um, so many days I'm just spent and that's where I'm so grateful for <laughs> this lovely hobby because I can just breathe, worry about putting <laughs> the little diamonds on the little squares and that's all it needs from me. And I know a lot of you will understand. So, <clears throat> a lot going on. And I know it's so interesting. All of these, these issues I've had, these flares I've had, they've all happened in August. So, there is, you know, and I haven't, I have stayed inside this summer. You know, a lot of it has to do with Hillary, my dog, because she hasn't been able to be outside and... Um, if she's not outside, I'm with her, and I just the heat. I can't handle it anymore. Ever since, um, ever since my surgery for lipedema, I don't handle heat well. I never really did. I mean, I'm not somebody who sweats. I've been that way my whole life, and so I don't displace heat well. And this summer has just been, I uh, no rejection, rejection. I'm over it. So all the people that love it, I've left plenty for you. <laughs> but I'm glad that we're hopefully winding down. They're saying this is the last big hurrah of heat for the summer. I don't believe it. But we'll see. I hope so. I'd like them to be right. But, um... <clears throat> so we've got Labor Day coming up. I have no big plans <laughs> except to stay safe and to stay away from all the people who are not safe. And speaking of such, I had a, a very odd situation the other night. It was Saturday night. <sighs> Went out for a ride, took Hillary for a ride, and was not far from home, stopped at a red light, and right beside me, a car had pulled up, and they went over the pedestrian crosswalk area, and I was about a foot, foot and a half away from that. I was not a car length away from that, or by any measure, um, just a safe, safe amount for people that are walking or on their bikes, and just sitting there, and waiting for the light to turn green. I was the first car. And all of a sudden, this uh, truck pulled behind me. And they honked when they very, very first pulled up. And I thought it was a little odd, but I gave them grace and thought, oh, maybe their hand um, slipped on the wheel. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. And I didn't think about it. Next thing I know, I have a man beating on my car window of my driver's side window and he's yelling at me to pull up he wants me to pull up he wants me to pull further up into the crosswalk because apparently he believed I was the reason why the light hadn't turned well all of the traffic was going it, there was it wasn't like this was an abandoned light and oh my gosh this light isn't turning and beyond that the other car would have tripped it None of it made sense, but I tried to figure out in those few moments what his problem was. But I mean, he beat on my car window and scared me to death. And all I could think was I was so grateful I had my window up because I like in the evenings to have my car window down. I have a sunroof. Uh, but for that night, I didn't. I didn't. I, I had the air on and we were just going home. I don't know what I did that if he'd have grabbed me. And, um... What was so funny is he got back to his car and the light was, I could tell the light was changing. He barely made it, but as he's putting his leg into the car and the light is turning green, which he hadn't even bothered to see, he is blaring his horn at me, blaring. So it was so funny because I was able to take off and he still had to climb in the car it was the most absolutely ridiculous thing, and it felt like, oh, wow, I've never, 
I, I can't imagine doing that to somebody ever, like ever. And the audacity, you know, and it felt like such a, a mansplaining moment of this man trying to explain to me how to do something. Oh my gosh, it was beyond. I just... And you know, I, I had to laugh it off and I told Hillary, this is why we don't go out. This is why we don't go out. This right here. <laughs> so be safe out there, y'all. Please be aware. And you know, even when I have my windows down, let me give you this tip. I don't know if you live in a city where there's a lot of panhandling. In Charlotte, it is a problem. And it, it makes me feel completely unsafe. Like just beyond unsafe and I hate it and uh, so when I pull up whether or not I see someone there I always expect someone to come out it doesn't matter um, please when you pull up if, if you have that problem please when you pull up to a red light roll up your windows I mean you just don't know I have seen people in front of me be spit on by panhandlers because they would not and I don't know how you respond like that is scary there's so many diseases and I, I just I can't um I absolutely hate it it makes me so uncomfortable and so that is a that's something I already do is when I pull up to a red light if my window is down I automatically it's just it's like breathing I go into well, let me roll up my window because I know somebody's going to come over and, it, and it's either panhandlers or we also have this issue where we have churches now, which I think is just the strangest thing, constantly handing out pamphlets at red lights. And then you have this competing space where here's the panhandler coming up to you and they're, they're wanting money. And have you noticed they don't ask for a dollar or change anymore? They say, you got five or $15? Inflation has really gone up for everybody, apparently. Um, so, uh, so you have the panhandler coming up. And then you also have now this church person saying, you want my pamphlet? You want my pamphlet? You want my pamphlet? <laughs> Meanwhile, you're also trying to drive and not kill anyone. So it's great. Um, don't recommend. So yeah, I just roll up the window with the light and I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I hate that that's allowed. It's, you're, you're trapped. You're absolutely trapped. It's completely unsafe. I don't know, you know, of all the places to trap somebody. Hate how it makes me feel. That powerlessness is it's problematic. So please roll your windows up, guys. Um, I'm just so grateful that mine were up. So yeah. I don't know where grace for one another has gone. It seems like it doesn't exist. But that that behavior is just frightening. You know, and I just think, oh my gosh, what if what if I had been somebody else who wasn't mentally stable and you did that and they pulled a gun on you they pulled you know a weapon on you it, I don't understand why you'd be willing to risk that over a couple of minutes and the irony too is he had another lane he could pull into to go around me or it was just so crazy I don't I don't understand it I don't need to I just need to protect me and Hillary and <laughs> it was beyond
so you know and uh, I truly believe that summer you see more crazy activity the heat tends to bring out the worst in people with attitudes and you know there's hangry for when you're hungry and you get angry and I don't know what it's called for heat <laughs> But it just makes people mad. So, I'll, I'm done. I'm done with the summer. It can go away. Um, but, yeah, I don't have anything planned for Labor Day. Just staying safe. I don't know when that became the goal of every... I mean, because, you, you know, all I think of on certain holidays is... Oh, everybody's out drinking. They're coming back from something where they've been drinking. You don't know. You don't know what people are doing. And, you know, it's the last hurrah of the summer. People are under stress about school starting. And, yeah. I don't know. My garden this summer really oh it just did not do well the heat I even bought um, I bought a shade that you can it's a shade material it blocks 50% of UV for your plants and I can see that it is helpful but unfortunately I got it too late <laughs> because my plants still suffered um, um, the garden just it, it started with beautiful promise and the heat was just too much for it and frankly I wasn't able to tend it at a certain point because I was so hot myself I was like well let's try it again next year this is not this is not our year so that's it's been my exciting summer. <laughs> I would like to take Hillary to the beach. She's never been, but I want to go in the fall when it's cooler and there's not 8 million people around. Um, she really likes to play in water. I don't know how much she'd like the ocean, but it'd be a nice trip to take her. Don't know if it'll be feasible, but it's something I'd like to do. I know that my days are well numbered with her, and I'm just trying to enjoy spending time with her. And I've been able to do that, and I'm grateful. And in addition, I have a 18-year-old cat. She'll be 19 in October. And she's doing well. She has a little bit of a kidney problem. Um, but she's okay. I don't like that. Um... She's been going for monthly injections for arthritis, and those have worked out, except the last couple, I don't know if they changed something, but she doesn't seem to enjoy, she didn't, she wasn't having a problem with her injection sites, but now they seem to bother her, so, well. So I'm putting a little bit more time in between her shots.
It's just been a, an exhausting summer. But my favorite season is just around the corner. I love fall. I love to go to the mountains um, around Asheville and check out the beautiful leaves. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to take a little trip up there and, and take Hillary and Winnie for another little jaunt to see the leaves. The mountains and forest are my happy place. I lived there for a year when I moved from Illinois to North Carolina and it was, it was paradise. So that's my update. Just trying to stay cool, keep the body calm. <laughs> Hopefully Thursday I will get some answers. I don't know. Um, oh, and also in 2022. So when that happened with <laughs> with my feet. They had also sent me to a pulmonologist to, to check out my lungs because they were like, maybe you're not getting enough oxygen because I was also having a lot of instances of my oxygen levels going down to 70. And so I got tested for all these things and they did x-rays on my lungs and I had nodules, about 15 of them on my lungs and so my doctor ran other tests and I don't have what he thought maybe I had initially um, interstitial lung disease I don't have that but they do need to keep track of the nodules and make sure they don't grow and become cancerous don't know why I have the nodules but he had also run some other tests and one of them came back positive for blood clots. So I got a phone call from him saying, you have to go right now to have um, some imaging done on your legs to see if you have blood clots in your legs. And I was like, what? And he's like, look, your test came back so high that it's saying that your body is throwing blood clots and I'm worried about you having a pulmonary embolism. You have to go get this test done right now. So I had to go have that done and that came back negative. There were no blood clots in my legs and he's like, well, then it must already be in your lungs. You're going to have to go to the ER tonight and you're going to have to have, um, uh, have this procedure where they inject you with if I remember correctly and maybe I don't forgive me but it was a it was a, a nuclear it's a nuclear agent that goes into your body and chases a blood clot I'll put the the test information below in case I want to get it right um, and I was like, okay. So um, I did. I went to the ER and they ran that test and it was not painful. And um, it was funny because the ER staff, based on the initial test that came back that said I had a blood clot, they were fully expecting me to have a pulmonary embolism. But it came back negative and I did not. So when it came back and they were like, you don't have a pulmonary embolism, I was like, yeah, I'm okay. I didn't think I did. <laughs> like, I know what that feels like, but I was like, I'm okay. But the test kept telling them, no, this person has blood clots. 
So that also was one of the things that made people go, that's really weird. And one of the nurses in the ER was like, you know, you're really lucky that you don't have a pulmonary embolism because all of these tests would have indicated that you did. And she's like, I have you been seen recently for an autoimmune disorder because you have to have one if you don't have a pulmonary embolism <laughs> then I something else is is wrong that's throwing this stuff off and I was like yeah but I haven't been diagnosed so it was just the weirdest very hard time um, but again no answers but that period was crazy. So I really understand people who, you know, have a lot going on and they don't feel good and they don't know what's wrong with them. I understand. It's real. And just because somebody doesn't have a word for it doesn't mean that it's not real. It just means they don't know. And it is hard to not know. It took 27 years for me to get a diagnosis of lipedema. And if I had had that when I was younger, it would have made, <laughs> it would have made all the difference in the world in my life. So <clears throat> I, as much sometimes as it's scary to know, I happen to believe that it's much better to have a name because then you can form your plan. You can put things in action. You can do research. And I am a very big research person. So I really believe in taking control of your life by doing everything you can to make sure you know um, what's going on. Because people don't know. It's like the prednisone. No one suggested that I take prednisone. That was literally from my research. And Gratefully, I just had a, a nurse practitioner who was exhausted from seeing me. And then when it worked, um, she was like, you must have an autoimmune disorder because it cleared that up and that's what it would have done. So I don't know, but that was me. You really do have to take the initiative and... Never be afraid to do some research. You can be wrong, but sometimes you're right. Remember, your doctors and nurses and everybody in your care team is also, they're also human. So they can be wrong too. And goodness knows they have been wrong many times on me. You know, telling me year after year that, oh, it's just your thyroid. When actually, well, yes, I do have hypothyroidism. I actually also had lipedema, and nobody, no, nobody diagnosed me with that, or probably even knew about it, frankly. So. I've gotten better over the years of being my own medical advocate and in part that's because I am someone else's advocate and but I I really understand that no one's coming to save me <laughs> I have to do this myself and sometimes you are just a number to people you're lucky if you have a great doctor who wants to help you and um, but sometimes you are just a number, sadly. Not to say that there aren't great doctors, but that's not every experience. Whoa, whoa, don't do it, potato! <laughs> so. I'm not afraid of research. I'm not afraid of trying different things. It's way better than having... A doctor look at you who just shrugs and says, I don't know. I don't know. What do you want me to do? I mean, I had that over and over. What do you want me to do? 
Um, I want to be able to walk. And when all you can do is keep your feet up because they are blood red and you literally see the blood as soon as you put your feet down. I had them in the recliner. As soon as I put them down, you would see the blood rush to my feet. And, you know, everybody just shrugged. I don't know. but we can't live in fear we have to live in empowerment and the only way we can do that is to be aware whether we're in the car whether we're dealing with our health and be proactive and that's what I wish for y'all as the summer comes to a close and we start getting back in school and in tight quarters where sickness is going to crop up and people start spending more money than they possess because they want to impress others or they are preparing for gift season just be safe and know that other people's stuff is never about you that took me a lifetime to understand but it is extremely true and valid and good to know is their stuff isn't about you you, know, you can love someone every molecule in their body do everything for them give them everything they could need and they could still treat you horribly because it isn't about you it's about them You know, that man behind me at the red light, that wasn't about me. I wasn't doing anything that would have required that reaction. Whatever triggered him to that action was completely and solely about him. And it's no different in our relationships, friendships, work relationships, whatever not about you. There's a little hitchhiker. If you need to repeat that to yourself as you're having a situation with someone, it doesn't hurt. You know, silently to tell yourself, this isn't about me. Because, I mean, unless you have done something to someone, and that happens, we're not all angels all the time. Sometimes we are mean, sometimes we are rude, sometimes we forget ourselves. But I'm talking about, in general, the person who just, you know, has a chip on their shoulder or they have victim mentality or whatever that's not about you that's how they see the world and you won't change it you're not going to love them enough to make them better please understand that all we can do is love someone through whatever wherever they're at and whoever they are at this moment but we're not going to love them enough to heal what's broken. That's, you can't do that. Ask me how I know. 
All right. So we've got mostly now doubles. A couple of singles, but we got the big bag left. <laughs> That's a single. And these full double bags. I'll take three to four of these small sizes. So, things like this project and just diamond painting in general are helping, coloring is helping, um, doing things that just, you know, bring joy and let me tap into an inner peace. Because only we can bring that. I mean, people can give us nice things. They can do nice things for us that make us feel good. But we still can... We're still the creators of our joy. And if you know that an activity like diamond painting <laughs> brings you joy... then there's no harm. Do it, do it, and make yourself be happy. And especially do it if by not doing it, you're such a miserable person that you want to make other people miserable. Because there are people like that. They don't they don't get to do something, then nobody's going to be happy. Oops. I don't know where we just went to. Mm -hmm. Hey now brought the tray out to keep everything that spilled. Yeah, so I highly recommend a, a, um, a little metal funnel. Works better than the plastic. Yeah, these trays have so much static. It's unreal. This is why I haven't been enjoying them. And maybe if I treated them with some static guard or something, that would help. That's my next step. See, that's just crazy to me. So that big chunky bag took one, took two. So yeah, I hope you guys have the remainder of your summer is great and you are thoroughly enjoying it 
and whatever magic that you may have to help push us toward <laughs> fall like last year i felt like fall took forever to get here so i started let's all start putting out our fall items decorations that's what i did last year <laughs> one of my neighbors was like you're putting it out a little early this year i was like i'm trying to bring in fall i'm, I'm done I, I want it to be here made me laugh but it was my plan it was manifesting fall <laughs> trying to desperately and I realized so um, burnt rose is my first diamond art club kit and I realized after I kitted that up that oh I could have used the sticker sheet with the the stickers and labels but I'm glad I didn't because I actually like having that beside me as I work because a lot of times since I am watching over Hillary I'm in the living room and I bought a table oh there's one of my 415s uh, I bought a table off of Timu that goes in my lap, but um, I don't know that it's still available, but they have it on Amazon as well. The company also sells on there, so I'll link to that below, and it is awesome. I sat in my recliner, and um, I put the, the tabletop, so to speak, at a tilt, and it does not cause any pain or anything while I'm diamond painting so I've just been doing that I used to set at a table but it wasn't very comfortable and I have to say this the slap desk is incredible so you'll have to check that out just pay attention to the measurements of your seat because um, there are different ones and I had to get the one that fit my chair But it's nice, so I can keep my legs up, which is an important important part um, for my lip edema and diamond painting next to my girl. All right, y'all, I'm gonna cut this short, I guess, and I just wanted to do a check in and. Let you know what's going on with me. I will update you with what I learn because I think that's important. I would never have gotten diagnosed with lipedema if I hadn't had a colleague actually share about her diagnosis. So I try to share what knowledge I have because you just never know who that will help. And because we're all in this together, we really are. We're on this um, planet all trying to make it. And sometimes some of us um, are given knowledge that we need to be able to share with others. So whatever I find out or don't find out or <laughs> I'll let you know but I thank you so much for being here and uh, I'll I'll fight with these biggie bags so thank you guys um, whether you're new here or you're returning I'm always happy to see you you're welcome here and let me know how you're doing what's up with your summer end of summer plans and I hope that you're all staying healthy and taking care of each other and as always Keep love and kindness on repeat. Until I see you again, bye-bye.